Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. Well, tip top of the evening, everybody, and welcome to Sports Final, where exactly one week from today, we hit pigskin pandemonium. You're giddy, we're giddy, so let's speed up the clock and start this pigskin party one week early. All the area teams are doing dress rehearsals, so why not your favorite friendly neighborhood sports director tonight? We take you to all corners starting in southeast Iowa. The Gabe Vandenberg experience underway. First play from scrimmage going up top. Ooh, there's a nice new wrinkle up to the big fella, Trevor Roth. Big pickup that would set up Mr. Roth in splashing home from one yard out to give the Keokuk first team offense. It's first of many touchdowns. We're not done. Vandenberg again to the air, this time to the speedster Darian Sanders. 51 yards on that touchdown strike. Vandenberg not done. First three series, all touchdowns against that second team defense. Look at this one right here to Bryce Baxter showing out for sports final. We told you we got you, Bryce. He was upset on Twitter. He thought we missed his touchdown. No, indeed. Keokuk's first team looking really good tonight on offense. Up next for them next week, a showdown with a tumble. We told you we'd go to all corners. Let's take you to the Hannibal Jamboree. Start you out with Clark County and Palmyra going at it. Palmyra going to the jet sweep right here. It's going nowhere, courtesy of Kyle Kovar, the big superior defensive end, doing some work right there. And then in the power eye, Bryce Budrew going in from one yard out to give his team its third touchdown of the day against none for Palmyra. Clark County wins that session. Palmyra trying to come back against Hannibal. Great pass here from Brock Butler to Leighton Wilson. Unfortunately for Palmyra, nullified due to a penalty. None of this was nullified. Look at the All-Stater, Caleb Beenick, shown off the hands. Great catch there from Dalton Powell. And it would be Hannibal taking out first Palmyra and then taking on Clark County right here in the marquee matchup of the night. Great pass right there. That is Justin Price on the other end of the Dalton Powell catch. That would set up Mitch Nichols going in for short yardage and the touchdown. Oh, but we're not done yet. How about uh, this guy, Reggie Hinton, the big fella? Two touchdowns of the night, showing up well as Hannibal dominated everybody. Other end of the field, Bowling Green taking on Mark Twain, and that's Malik McPike with a touchdown early in that session. Highland looking good, though, against Bowling Green. First, it's Chris Sparks from one yard out. Superb fullback, all conference pick last year. And then Austin Richmiller going to the air for the outstanding wide receiver, Mr. Derek Brown. Great catch for him. Injured his ankle on the celebration. Highland, though, looked a lot better tonight, so there's your highlights from Hannibal. We also went to Milan tonight. Let's take to those highlights where Knox County was trying to get things done for Coach Van Delft taking on Putnam County and the host team Milam tonight. You will watch Milan first against the Knox County Eagles in black. Beautiful interception right there by Donovan Edwards, whose name you will hear a lot for the Eagles this season. Great uh, interception, great pickup right there. Nice, nifty return. How about some good news for Knox County's offense? That is Kellen Gillespie back after being injured all of last season, showing off his power right there. Then Donovan Edwards is going to take over at quarterback, doing some nice things as well. Back underneath center. Oh, he's going to pull up and keep it, calling it on his own. Pretty nice showing tonight for Knox County. We'll talk more about them a little later next week. We said all corners tonight. Let's take you to Illinois scrimmage night. Meet the Mustangs in Menden. Start you off right here with Zach Miller, one of many quarterback candidates. Looking pretty good right here with a 12-yard pickup right back up the middle. Later, more to come from the Mustang offense. How about Drew Mugi, big number 20 on your screen. Showing nice hands on this one and catching that ball despite the fact that he was clearly and blatantly interfered with. That's good concentration. More to come right here. Big receivers. Oh, we've got some right here. Gage Klitz, big fella, can dunk a basketball and can run people over clearly as you see right there demonstrable evidence more to come from the receiving core this time it's Michael Richards with a nice catch as well as unity looked pretty darn good tonight we'll barnstorm with them a little later this week back here in the gem city Quincy Notre Dame conducting its blue and gold scrimmage on the night uh, Mr. Gettenbacher right here tries to get up the field but Ben Holschlag the all-conference pick last year Showing you why he bench presses about 475 pounds. I made that up. He bench presses like 350, but he's still very, very strong. More to come right here. Matt Doan playing some quarterback, looking down the right sideline and finding Barry Welper, who has been really good in the sessions, as we saw in the scrimmage last week. And he's going to break away from everybody for the big pickup right there. Sets up the score right here just a bit later. Matt Doan with a fake off the handoff, tries to motor upfield, but the defensive line, though, would get him as the blue team. The varsity team wins tonight 8 to nil tonight as Quincy Notre Dame's offense and defense particularly showing up very well. And at Quincy High School tonight, Rick Little trying to get it done tonight. Curtis Schuster right here rolling to the left. Clay Finkley is going to be there, and this kid has had himself a monster camp. Really nice player, really good nose guard. Tell you what, that Quincy High defense, as we touched on a number of times this week, is going to be really, really salty 
Not a whole lot of offense in this tonight. Malik Robbins sitting out when we got there tonight, so can't tell you a whole lot. The Blue Devils getting ready for that big showdown coming up with Alton. As we said, couldn't be more giddy about next week when it all starts for real. Now, speaking of football, it was about as nightmarish a turn of events as could befall anyone. Hours after tearing knee ligaments in his team's playoff quarterfinal win over Triopia, Brown County quarterback Tim Woodward lost something more valuable than his season. He lost his father to cancer. Now entering his senior, senior year with a clean bill of health, the Hornet signal caller has plenty to play for. Tearing my ACL was an awful experience watching, you know, my teammates go out there and play to school and that semifinal game was one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. So, you know, getting back, all that hard work rehabbing it, you know, it feels great just to be out here with the guys again and, you know, helping this team out. Tim Woodward, uh, you know, he is he is what this program is about. You know, he's a guy that's real supportive of his, his teammates. Uh, you know, he persevered through a, a very tough uh, off season to get himself back in shape. And, uh, you know, he's, he stepped back in and he's ready to go. And uh, we're real excited for Tim and, and I hope he has a great season. Tim Woodward isn't just the face of the program in Brown County. He's about the only recognizable face on the Hornet roster this season. Outside of Woodward and offensive lineman Cole Garrett and Nathan Banta, Brown County will go at this fall with 19 other new starters. You know, every year we uh, keep losing a bunch of starters, graduate big senior classes, and that's just what we're about here. We uh, just plug in new players. We have great coaches. You know, I think uh, everybody on this team, uh, you know, wants to fill in those spots and, and be that next guy. And, uh, you know, we don't return a lot of guys, but a lot of guys got experience uh, you know, those four extra games in the playoffs that they, uh, you know, got to compete, you know, that, that extra month and, and go. And I think a lot of those guys really learned from that and uh, learned how the, the seniors from last year prepared themselves. And I think they'll be ready for this season. So if you're expecting the Hornets to take a step backwards in 2012, you're probably in the minority, at least in Mount Sterling. Tom Little has plenty of ammo left in the arsenal, including a trio of replacement running backs who are indisputably quick with the football in their hands. Uh, you know, losing uh, last year's backfield, you know, Alex Shepard and Rick Loggs and Sam Henry, you don't replace those guys, but, uh, you know, you get uh, Braxton Phelps, uh, Brady Long, and, and the, the plethora of fullbacks that we have uh, coming through. You know, those guys are, are very talented in different levels, different speed. They're able to catch out of the backfield, and uh, everybody brings something special to the table. Uh, uh, Rick and Shep were great, and it was a great learning experience for me for blocking for them. And I think Braxton and Brady can hold their own in varsity. I mean, they're fast. And the new backs figure to be well protected. Personnel have come and gone in Mount Sterling over the years, but the one constant here has been blocking guru Heath Fullerton. Coach Fullerton has five great linemen every year, and he just teaches them well, gets them the fundamentals down. You know, the program, we just keep trying to keep it going. They're young, and they're learning really quick. They're doing things right, and Coach Fullerton's pushing us pretty hard. That same kind of consistent dynamic holds sway with Eric Grady's defense, which may not employ a single returning starter from a year ago. But the goals haven't changed at all, with a conference title first on that list. No easy affair with a loaded Triopia team still in play and a new rival from just up the road. Um, you know, with the addition of Camp Point Central to an already tough, uh, you know, Count North Division, and uh, you know the South Division games that we have to play, uh, you know it's going to be tough. We were we were little when we started this program, and we came out here and we saw them, you know, get beat, have two and nine seasons. And, you know, we don't want that to ever come back here. We want to keep it going. Our goal each year is to go one step for farther. And last year we made it to the semifinal. We take a lot of pride in the fact that we've been very successful the last uh, few years, and and uh, you know we think our program is one of the better programs in the state. And uh, you know to hear people say that uh, they don't think we can do it, you know, it's extra motivation for our kids. Uh, you know, they don't want to. Take Take that step back. They want to keep taking that step forward to try to get a championship. Uh, good stuff. We're talking more football tomorrow morning with the pigskin preview starting right here at KHQA at 11. Let's talk some golf. Q&D girls off to a roaring start, winning a quadrangular at Westview today. Jamie Earhart, your medalist, no surprise there, with a 33. Speaking of golf, Luke Guthrie making a move one day before moving day today on the Web.com Tour. Currently in 13th place. Great day today. A four under par today to make his seventh straight cut. Hasn't missed one yet. The leader currently at 10 under par. So Luke has four strokes to make up over the the next two days if he wants to win his first professional golf outing. And finally tonight, Major League Baseball. The St. Louis Cardinals are just not doing themselves any favors. Needed to make one up against the Pirates. 
Boy, they gave one away tonight. Losing 2-1 to one was your final. James McDonald with a great pitching effort for the Buckos tonight. Coming up tomorrow, we've got local golf for the first time this season. We'll be barnstorming some more. we got a little more jamboree action coming your way and all kinds of goodies, maybe even some soccer to talk about tomorrow as well. All of it right here. We'll see you at 1020 and then overtime back a week from tomorrow. We'll see you then, everybody. Football is finally here.